welcome to Fishing Britain. This week I'm on the banks of a small fishery, trying to catch a very unusual fish. More of that later. And Glasgow Junior, he takes us urban perch fishing. But first, it's off to Draycott Water. Did you know it's the opening day of the trout season? Draycott Water is a reservoir and country park near the village of Dunchurch in Warwickshire. The reservoir was opened in 1969 and covers more than 600 acres and holds up to 5 billion gallons of water. Just how many fish has Craig Barr, the fishery manager, put in for the keen early birds? 7,000 pre-season fish we put in, right. which is, is ample for a 600 acre lake like this. We, we think last year there's a carryover of about eight to 12,000 fish. Um, which, which is huge numbers. Yeah. You've got to take into consideration predation as well. So, you know, to gauge exactly how many is in there is difficult, but there's definitely a good, good amount of fish in there. And how many fish are you going to put in? 29,000. <laughs> That's a lot of fish, but there is a lot of water. We wander around the banks to see if they're being found. And on Rob Taylor's second cast, he pulls in a lovely chunky rainbow. First fish of the season. Job done. We also bump into Brian Warwick, who remembers what it was like on the first day Draycott opened. I'm nearly 81, and uh, I like my fishing. I've, I've fished here ever since it opened, the first day. Uh, oh, I've caught my limit, eight fish, yes, yeah. Oh, it was good beginning of the year. It, it was a small pond, and because they built the dams, there's five dams all the way around here and they, they're a small pond and they put 300,000 browns in, just that big. Yeah. And after 18 months, they were like that. In the autumn, they used to, you could see fish in pairs, these two browns, you know, a male yeah. and female. I mean, if you, if you could see one, if you could see one swimming past, they were really aggressive. They'll take anything. A little bit like these frisky stockies. Just about everyone is having good luck. The sun is shining for a change, and the fishing is almost too easy. Even our presenter has sneaked off to wet a line, but he does look like he's about to do the washing up. Right, it's now my turn. All fingers and thumbs, as usual. Well, let's get this line out, and I just want to show you a really nifty piece of kit that I've just got hold of because I'm fed up on bank fishing. You know when you're walking around, your line catches the reeds or it gets around the rock. And especially early season, you're using sinking lines. They're going to sink all the way down. It's my washing up bowl. <laughs> it's not really. And there's a lot of thought gone into this. One, it's got there to hold the rod. So if you're out wading and if you want to retie flies and that, your rod's secure. There are things in there that will keep your line apart. So it's actually designed in Denmark and they do a lot of coast fishing for sea trout. So you just imagine wading through the kelp and the waves and everything. So over the years, it's evolved to what I think is the best line tray. One little drawback with using any line tray though is that it's there. So if you want to do long strips, you, you tend to hit your knuckles on it. That's the only downfall, but the, the good points far outweigh that. If you want the faster retrieve, then obviously just roly poly it and it all goes in the basket. And the beauty with it is if I want to walk up the bank or if I want to walk up there, then everything comes with me. It's not going to snag up at all. Right, now come on you, bars of silver. Early season, cold. Yeah, right. Well, actually, I got up this morning five. Ooh, that was a take, stop talking and start concentrating. I got up at five o'clock this morning and it was all frost on the car. So fish can be a little bit deeper, so fish a little bit slower. And those technical fishermen out there, this is a fast intermediate. What's that mean? Well, sinks are one and a half inches per second. And it's a specialist bank line. It's one of those 40 plus, which may, enables you to get distance with ease. But to be honest with you, most anglers aren't ca casting more than probably 20 yards. Today, all the boat fleet is out as well. And this is where there's a little bit of conflict between bank anglers and boat anglers. Because early season, those fish tend to hu hug the shallows. So the bank anglers obviously want to be fishing here. The boat anglers want to be, and they tend to encroach on each other. But 
to be honest with you. Be fair to each other, it'll be fine. There's enough fish in the reservoir. Not in my spot at the moment. <laughs> oh, I lost it again! Oh! Oh! Now that was within six, seven yards of the bank. The beauty of early season, first day of the season, right, is you've got a chance of catching quite a few overwintered fish. Because nobody's fished for them all through the winter. They've had peace and quiet. So they're not as weary as they were at the end of the last season. Right, now this is where I had to take last time, just on the lift there. You know what? It always happens when you really, really concentrate on, on thinking, right, right, I'm not going to miss the take this time. You don't get a take. It's as if a fish have got six cents. They know that you're paying attention. Right, a little bit further out. There, he's come. <laughs> this fish took me twice. Ooh, ooh. Is it one of those overwintered ones I'm talking about? Don't know. But he's fighting well. Right, there's the fly just in the corner of his mouth. Don't even need to take the fish out if you don't want. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you. Wet your hands. Perfect bar of silver. Right, put him back. There he goes. <laughs> yes! 2014 season kicked off in style. Ooh, yeah. So there we have it. Anglers as old as Howell and Brian still get excited for the first day of the trout season, and for good reason. Oh. If you would like to know more about fishing on Draycott Water, then visit their website at flyfishdraycott.co.uk. It's time to crank up the music. We're handing over to our urban warrior, Ant Glasgow Jr., who's searching for perch. We think Ant Glasgow Jr. may have gone all hip hop on us as he takes fishing Britain along the canals in the centre of Manchester. Maybe we should have brought along some spray cans rather than our fishing gear. It seems that not only tagging hip hoppers dwell around these parts, he says follow your nose and you might even find an elusive lesser shouty drunk under the bridge too. Once the thriving arteries that were a super highway of industry now are washed with the litter of the fast paced cities above, these waterways still hold plenty of life in them. We are urban perch fishing which seems to be rising in fashion all over the country. Yeah, so this urban fishing lark's getting even more popular now, you see more and more people do it, it's in magazines and I think it's just easy for someone to just grab a box of lures, a few bits of rod, and just do one to your local canal or like I have in, in the city centre, you know, and there's still fish here to be caught, you know, some of these urban places with traffic and graffiti and dirty syringes and all sorts knocking about, it's a shame, all that is a shame, but at the end of the day, if you're from the city, you have to put up with that. You're never going to escape it. And and yeah, you know, there's some cracking fish to be caught here. And you know, you can you can dive on the bus, dive on the tram, jump in the car, come here, catch a few perch, do one back home. It's natural for me to come down here and see a hobo under the bridge and, and just step over the top of him and just carry on drop shot fishing. That's the kind of stuff that I've grew up doing, you know. I knew there'd be one under this bridge. <laughs> that is brilliant. I mean, the gear that I've, I've come here today is just a small, ultralight, six foot three, zero to five gram rod, small little reel, uh, a six pound braid on there, and you know, I'm fishing for perch, there's a small fluorocarbon leader on there. If there's a lot of pike in the area, then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll put a wire trace on. And the secret with this urban street fishing lark is, is keep on the move all the time. You've got to find where the fish are. Now, nine out of 10, You'll be getting a lot of a lot of roach and, and prey fish feeding under these bridges because you've got to use your noggin. You get the pigeons that shh in the water, uh, and that attracts obviously the fish feeding on the bits and pieces, and then that attracts that attracts the perch. 
So bridges, for that reason, are always the, the first places where I start. If there's nothing there, then I'll, I'll head on further down the river or further down the canal and just gotta keep, keep on the move. Now that was sexy. <laughs> thinking that's just pure neglection and that to me looks like perch heaven it stinks down there mate you see that polluted water sign that's perch heaven it definitely is a biohazard to humans there's feces and all sorts down there and trust me they ain't from an animal so I think it's best we move on, right into the heart of the city where the perch have an expensive dockside apartment and easy commute to work. Ah, this seems a little cleaner, well presented, tidy, oh. Well, it's gritty stuff like this that attracts the insects, which attract the bait fish, and then completing the food chain, in come the perch and pike. These striped little beggars love popping out for sushi at lunchtime with their work colleagues, and it looks like shrimps on today's menu. Ant goes for the drop shot method, as this tiny dock is around 7.5 metres deep. The large jig head will get the jelly shrimp down to the bottom fast, and as he moves along the bridge, jigging the end of the rod, the shrimp will look like it's scuttling along the bottom. This dock is right in the centre of the city and must have thousands of people walking over it every day, completely oblivious to what lies beneath, and it takes a keen-eyed urban warrior like Ant G to sniff them out. Check that little guy out. This is a place where you would normally walk across and wouldn't think there was fish in there. I just dropped this guy down and woof, he nailed that. You know, awesome. There you have it, last fish of the day. Real urban perch. I just put that shrimp right under that bridge there and whack. A little fatter, he's beautiful. So perch are awesome. They're crazy, they're always hungry. They remind me of me. And you know what the best thing is? They live right here in my city. From one cool dude, here's a super cool dude. Here's David with the news. This is Fishing Britain News. Police are hoping to reel in young people with a new hobby that'll keep them out of trouble. Summit Fishy has been launched by officers with help of the Durham Agency Against Crime to educate, divert and develop youngsters, especially those in danger of getting involved in petty crime or anti-social behaviour. A US fisherman's world record lake trout has been disqualified. Rob Scott of Minnesota pulled the 52 pound 3 ounce fish through the ice on the Ontario side of Lac de Creux on the 8th of February 2014, but he was breaking Canadian fishing laws as he'd already caught one fish that day, which he then gave to somebody else, which is against the law in Canada. 
A Swedish man has found fame on YouTube after he rescued a duck which had become tangled up in discarded fishing line. Kent Rain hopped into the freezing lake in order to rescue the bird. After setting it free, he did jumping jacks to warm himself up. The Angling Trust is opposing plans to build a huge tidal lagoon off Wales. A six-mile lagoon wall enclosing a large segment of Swansea Bay is to be constructed between the mouths of two of the best salmon and sea trout rivers in South Wales. However, developers say the £850 million lagoon could provide power for 120,000 homes for 120 years. And finally, shark-mounted cameras have shown that when there's bully boy tactics, there's safety in numbers. The video recordings are giving scientists an insight into shark behaviour, say researchers at the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology. The team found that reef sharks, hammerhead, sandbar sharks and oceanic blacktips together ward off attacks from tiger sharks. You are now up to date with Fishing Britain News. Fishing for facts, landing the stories. Charlie Jacoby here, this is my weekly roundup of the best fishing on YouTube. If Carl and Alex are the one direction of carp fishing, then Max and Tosh from Essex Angling TV are the wanted. Here's an update from a local club lake just to let you know what's going on and they are catching fish. So cool. Next, a shout out to another British carping channel, Careful Carping, who produces his 40th episode and his first of 2014. Are you a novice fly fisher who likes being talked down to? Then this British film is for you. However, there is something comforting about the Mr. Crabtree-style voiceover that accompanies Terry Lawton as he upstream fly fishes the Little River Winsome in Norfolk. Let's get a lesson in salmon fishing from Scandinavia. It's only a trailer, but Salmon Anglers introduces you to the fishermen on the River Aukla and follows their fishing adventures in different parts of the river over a period of two years. Off to Canada, where Monster Fraser River Sturgeon shows a lucky man from Minnesota get into a 350-pound fish on a guided charter. And off to Australia for Malakuta Fishing 2014 in Victoria, a great place to go and enjoy the outdoors and all its beauty, says Aussie Feral Control. We are in proper yippee ki America. It is the last day of a Labor Day fishing trip, the closest the country has come to socialism, and we are shark fishing from a coastal jetty with some interesting techniques, including a ray as bait. And finally, Mr. Carp King produces this film to remind you that when out in your bivy on the bank at night, you are awfully, horribly alone. <laughs> <laughs> Click on the links to watch the videos, or you will find them in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for Hooked on YouTube, ping me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv It's springtime, time for springers. A little bit later I'll be talking to Ian Gordon about the future of the Atlantic salmon. So where am I? Am I in Scotland? Am I going to be piped down to the river with a man wearing a kilt? No, I'm in the county of Rutland and we're fishing Palm Springs. I said I was on the bank of a fishery, trying to catch something unusual. It's on the end of the line. Are you going to see it? I don't know. But it's pulling hard. Can you see it's boring down? That might give you a hint. Then again, it might not. We have caught some unusual species on Fishing Britain. Did you see it? Did you see it? Oh! Ah, it's a nice fish. I mean, luckily, they're a very hard fighting fish and they're great to eat. Um, so, I, and I'm, that's me. I like to do something a bit different and more challenging, really. It's been experimental. I've had my disasters. Um, I've learned it's been a huge learning curve. Uh, I could say just about after five, six years, I'm, I think I've got it. Uh, I have to keep the water quality very good. It's a deep lake, so the temperature's stable. Well, the last one <laughs> got away. So this one, I've had to change tactics. I've had to go down really, really deep, really slow. But boy, they don't have pull for their weight. But what's on the end of the line? Oh, wait till you see. 
And you know, it's a fisherman's tale. They always say, oh, the ones you lose <coughs> are bigger. Well, actually, the one I did lose was bigger. But have a look at this. No, oh, get in the net! <laughs> so what is it? What is it? What is it? Whoops, lazy. Here we go. It is an Atlantic salmon caught in the county of Rutland. Absolutely gorgeous. What a bar of silver. So Ben, I've got to ask you, the only Atlantic salmon fishery, yes. you, you say, in the world? Yeah, stopped freshwater lake, yes. Yeah. Question is, why? <laughs> um, I need to earn a living. <laughs> um, you know, I've kept salmon similarly to people keep koi carp. It's just a hobby that I happen to do. Um, we stocked trout lakes in the past with salmon, so when I needed to, you know, um, expand the business, I started my own lake. Future of these fish are rosy. They've been looked after, they're being bred to put in the lake. But that's not the case for the wild Atlantic salmon. Every run, every year, are diminishing. But things are starting to change. A very famous Scottish angler, Ian Gordon, has started a petition to try and secure the future of the fish. Hi, my name's Ian Gordon, and I've been involved in setting up this petition to try and stop the netsmen beginning to net in the first six weeks of the season, so the spring part of the year, which is targeting spring salmon. What I thought was, is if we can get as many people to get behind this as possible, but not only fishing people, country people, the people that supply hotels within the countryside, it is worth 140 million to the Scottish economy. And how do they sign up? Well, it's, it's, it's available on, on the change.org website. Search my name on that, you'll see it'll come up straight at the top of the, the list. Well, folks, that's it for another week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Now, maybe it's inspired you to go out fishing. And if you do and catch, post a picture on our Facebook page. Also, don't forget to go and sign Ian's petition. And if you want to keep up to date with all the other programmes on the channel, go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, and fill out that constant contact form. And if you want to keep up to date with what we're doing, follow us on Twitter. I'll see you next week on Fishing Britain.